Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my presentation today. My name is Mai Matsunaga from Kyoto Sangyo University in Japan. The title of my presentation today is The Effects of a Self-Study Program on Pre-Service Teachers' English Pronunciation. So today I'm going to talk about pre-service teachers who want to become teachers at the elementary school level in Japan. So I'll talk about the results and effects of a self-study program those pre-service teachers conducted outside of the class on their pronunciation skills. So let me begin with the current situation of English education at the elementary school in Japan. A new course of study went into effect in year two, 2020, so about three years ago. And before this, English education at the elementary school was like, it was required for only for the fifth and sixth graders and once in a week. But it changed completely under the new course of study. For the third and fourth graders who are about nine to 10 year olds, they take an English class once in a week, focusing on listening and speaking skills. And for the fifth and sixth graders, they take an English class twice in a week and focusing not only on listening and speaking skills, but also on reading and writing skills. But in either case, still homeroom teachers are mainly teaching those classes. So as you can see, the, the hours increased and the level increased. So the question is, are homeroom teachers ready to teach those high level classes? And I would also like to mention about phonetics for pre-service teachers in Japan. As you know, English teaching in elementary schools mainly focuses on developing students' oral skills, at least in Japan, and teachers are expected to conduct classes in English. And teaching classes in English requires, of course, English speaking skills, but not only that, but also proper pronunciation to be good models for their students. But here, the reality in Japan is, number one, phonetics is not a required course in a teaching certificate program for elementary schools. Two, a majority of pre-service teachers become teachers without appropriate knowledge of English phonetics. Therefore, three, in-service teachers do not have confidence in their pronunciation, so they don't have confidence in teaching English either. Based on this reality, researchers have suggested, number one, a teaching certificate program should offer a required course in phonetics. This is ideal, but this is not happening. At least this hasn't happened yet. Because of the tight schedule in a teaching certificate program, there is no room for phonetics to come in. And the second suggestion is phonetics should be incorporated into a required course offered in a teaching certificate program. And I agree with the second suggestion, and I use this in my research as well. And what I wanted to do was to work with pre-service teachers, meaning university students in a teaching certificate, pr certificate program, to be ready to teach with proper skills, including pronunciation. So I decided to help them conduct a self-study program on English pronunciation outside the class time. Then after a self-study program, research question one, how do the participants evaluate their improvements in their English proficiency and teaching skills? And two, what aspects of pronunciation skills do they think they still need to improve? And three, what kinds of English and teaching skills do the participants find necessary in regard to their future work as English teachers? And as highlighted in blue, number two and three, are the research questions I would like to talk about in this presentation.
So let me talk about the participants first. There are 52 participants at a university level in a, in a teaching certificate program at a private university in Japan, and mostly women, and their majors were either English for elementary school education or preschool education. And their level of English, English related qualification says, Aiken test above grade two. Aiken test is uh, the most popular test in Japan. And Aiken test above grade two means, grade two means about TOEIC score of 550 and above or CEFUL B1. So it's a good level. And I should mention that this is higher than average Japanese university students. So the level of school is a little higher than the average level in Japan. So their English skills are not bad, rather good. And I used a textbook for the self-study program on pronunciation. The title is Most Important English Pronunciation in Class. The textbook is this one. And this textbook had eight sections and a total of 86 units. And the participants were supposed to study about four to five units per week. And the textbook had sections like 10 sounds Japanese learners have trouble with, like L and R sounds, or th, th sound, and vowel sounds, diphthong sounds, and consonant sounds, minimal pairs, foreign words, and incorrect Japanese English, linking and reduction in English sounds. English prosody, stress, and intonation. So those are included in this textbook. So it covered pretty much everything they needed. And each unit has advice for proper pronunciation of the target sound and approximately 10 words and four sentences that include the target pronunciation points. And I chose this textbook because the textbook was aimed at elementary school teachers and example words and sentences are selected for classroom use at the elementary school level. So as I mentioned a little earlier that the participants were supposed to study four to five units per week and the total of 20 weeks, 10 weeks in the first semester and the other 10 weeks in the second semester. So 20 weeks is the total. And each unit took approximately 10 minutes for them to study. So I expected the participants to study 40 to 50 minutes per week. Not much, but I thought it would be feasible that way. If I expected too much of them, I don't think they would continue the project. And to follow up on their studying, I conducted quizzes on the textbook. There were two kinds. One was at the beginning of each session, the participants took an individual oral review quizzes. And to be concrete, I asked them three questions randomly, and they had to say those sentences in English using correct grammar, I mean, correct pronunciation, and of course, grammar. And the second type was too long, oral review quizzes. So one in one semester and the other in the next semester. And all the quizzes were tested on accuracy, pronunciation, and intonation. And I also conducted a survey before and after the self-study program to see how they self-evaluate their English proficiency and teaching skills and free description section. Free description sections are included only on the post test, I mean post survey. And English proficiency included these five aspects, of course, pronunciation included. And I used six levels corresponding to the several levels. So A1 to C2, and six was the highest. 
And as a passing level, I set V1 as a passing level, so level three in this research. For the teaching skills, I looked at the four aspects listed here. And there are four levels, and I set the passing level as level three. So at the level three, for example, the participants can manage class activities properly in English, but not perfectly. That's level three. And level four is the highest, and that's perfect. But I don't expect to expect them to be perfect at that point. Level three was enough to conduct classes in Japanese elementary schools. And the pre-description section included these four aspects. A, evaluation of the self-study program in general. B, aspects of pronunciation they need more practice on. C, aspects of pronunciation they improved. D, future self-study activities to improve their English proficiency and teaching skills. And as highlight, highlighted in blue, in this presentation, I will mainly talk about the free description results. And this course itself was taught both online using Zoom and face-to-face, -face, but mostly using Zoom because of the COVID-19 situations. And what I did with this self-studying, before the participants self-studied the target units of the week outside the class, in class, We learned together the target sounds, target words, and target sentences in the textbook. Then we practiced together a little bit, and I explained the points a little bit, like 10 to 15 minutes in each class. Then after class, they had to self-study those points themselves and be ready for the quiz next week. So I wanted to use a combination of direct teaching in class and self-study together. I thought that would be effective. Then let's look at the results here. So to answer research questions two and three, I think you're looking at this chart. So the data in the pre-description sections was analyzed using this self-organizing map in the KH Coder. KH Coder is a free application to analyze qualitative data like this, text data, as quantitative way, in a quantitative way. So you can see qualitative data in a more objective way. So I use this KH coder to analyze my data. This self-organizing map categorizes frequently used words into groups. The words in the same groups are used in a similar context. So therefore, by looking at the self-organizing map, you can roughly grasp main context meaning topics or themes participants try to describe. And this figure you're looking at shows eight groups, eight colors, right? So it means eight groups. And these eight groups can be narrowed down to four groups. I looked at the words and stuff and I narrowed them down to four groups, half. Then can you see the black lines and numbers like one, two, three, four? Those were added by me. And also the data was of course in Japanese. So everything was done in Japanese. So I put some English translation to the main words in each group, but not all of them because of the limited space in each category. But you can roughly see some English words in each section and see what kinds of group they are. So group one, which is a, one A and one B on the right upper side here, one A and one B, beige and light green section. 
Okay, this is one group, group one, and the participants, this shows the participants' evaluation of the self-study program in general. And looking at the words, the participants thought learning pronunciation was useful and necessary for them to teach their students correct pronunciation. And also the participants had positive attitudes towards the self-study program on pronunciation skills. Good. And group two, on the right side, I'm sorry, no, on the left side, 2A, pink, 2B, purple, 2C, down at the bottom, 2C overlapping with 4A. Can you see that? 2A, 2B, 2C. This is group two. Group two describes aspects of English pronunciation the participants still needed to improve. So looking at the words, the participants struggle in using proper pronunciation is showed, shown, and the participants tended to use appropriate pronunciation during their practice time or review quizzes, but they tended to forget to use proper pronunciation and instead they tended to use Japanese English when they're not conscious about it, especially in teaching situations. Okay, so group two showed the struggle. And group three is right in the middle, 3A and 3B, gray and orange. Group three shows the participants' evaluation of their improvement in using English pronunciation. They struggle, but also at the same time, they improved, of course. And by looking at the words, the participants thought, thought they developed confidence in using proper pronunciation in speaking through the self-study program. Good. And the last group, four, group four, four A overlapping with two C at the bottom, pink, and four B blue. Group four describes English and teaching skills the participants wanted to improve for better teaching. Looking at the words, the participants wanted to improve their prosody skills, such as stress and intonation, along with pronunciation to become closer to a native speaker level of a speaker. And they wanted to learn to adjust their level of English to that of their students by using simple and easy expressions, which is difficult to do. So the overall analysis suggested that the participants found the self-study program a good opportunity to learn useful and practical English pronunciation in the assigned textbook. And they also realized that they needed to acquire oral English skills, pronunciation and prosody and speaking skills with proper grammar, which would enable them to effectively teach English to young learners with limited English ability. So I think they had an opportunity to reflect on their teaching, what they already have and what they needed to improve more. So it was a good reflection time for them. That's part of a good point of conducting a self-study program, I think. The conclusion here, number one, Prospective teachers can develop a habit of self-study. To begin with, I wasn't sure if a self-study program would work. Maybe they don't study at all, or maybe they study. I, I didn't know. But after this research, I became sure that self-study works if a teacher provides them with proper materials or they that a teacher guides them in the right direction. So, and this works and this is really good because as I told you before, in Japan at least, there is too much to do in the teaching certificate program and there is no way they can improve their English skills or teaching skills properly in the limited courses. So what I thought would be important is what and how much they work outside the classroom, meaning a self-study activity. So they tried really hard and 
I didn't, I haven't mentioned the quiz results, but all the quizzes, the average of 97% correct answers. So it means that they spent enough time practicing and studying for the quizzes and practicing their pronunciation. So once prospective teachers find self-studying important and crucial in their teaching, they work on it. So I found that. So it's only the first year students this time, but I can say that in the second year, they can do some other self-studying like learning classroom English using correct grammar and correct pronunciation. And in the third year, they can do speaking practice with using correct grammar, which is really difficult, high level. And in their fourth year, they're ready to go into actual teaching practice at elementary schools with all the skills they learn through the self-studying. So I can see that's happening and which is really good for me to find out. And number two is participants notice gaps in their knowledge and skill sets, as I mentioned. They understand what they already have as a teacher and what they still do not have as a teacher, so what they have to work on. And finally, number three, a combination of self-study and direct instruction is essential for successful, successful self-study programs. As I mentioned a little earlier, I wanted to use a combination of self-study and direct instruction in class. I didn't want to have the participant just self-study outside the classroom without my instruction in class, because I didn't think that would work. They would just give up because they didn't know what to do or how to do things. So I used a little bit of time in each class, like 10 to 15 minutes, explaining and practicing together. Then they know what they have to do outside the classroom, then let them do what they have to do. And it worked really well. So I think a combination is important. So these are the things I found. But overall, I think self-studying can work well if the, the instructor, this time myself, if the instructor is ready and provides proper materials for the students. Thank you for listening to my presentation. And this study was supported by JSPS Kakenhi Grant. And these are the references. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.